In this video we're going to take a look at the newly released bike machine from tier 1 of the Hack the Box starting point track. I've connected to the starting point VPN and I've booted the machine but I haven't done anything else yet so let's start off by running an nmap scan. We'll do service enumeration, we'll do default scripts and we'll do all TCP ports. Just paste in the IP there as well. I'm also going to add that to the host file so if we don't want to remember that IP address each time, we can go and add the IP to the host file and then put a domain name in with it. So I'll just call this bike.hackthebox. Save that, and that means that if we try to access in the browser bike.hackthebox, hopefully it will redirect us. So that's a good thing to do if you see that there's a HTTP service open. You can start enumerating that because that's quite often going to be the foothold into the system. So we can, while we're waiting for an nmap scan, we could also go and run some other tools like Neato. And if you want to get some more information on some of these tools, I normally just have a quick look at the help section to see if there's a example of commands and what options we have. But somebody recommended TLDR to me recently. So you can provide a tool name, TLDR Neato, and it'll give you some example commands. We can do the same with nmap. We can do the same with GoBuster, etc. And anything that's not indexed, it will go and create the index for it, basically. So that's a pretty cool tool. I'll be using it more often. Uh, let's do nito-host and paste in that domain name. Let's also run GoBuster. So we could do that TLDR GoBuster. And we've got some examples here. In this case, I'm going to do the directory mode. So we'll, we'll provide that. We'll do GoBuster, dir mode, URL. We can do dash u pasting that URL and then we need a word list so dash w user share word lists der buster and then I usually use the lowercase uh, medium we can also look for extensions so maybe we'll have a look for PHP extensions or HTML or TXT I'll just put that to PHP and let's leave that running, although we could also go and check and see actually what type of web server it is, so Nikto should come back with that, we can see Express here our MAP scan returned as well, although it doesn't show the actual service for the HTTP server, although we did use service enumeration, so let's go back to Nikto Nikto we have Express, we can also have a look at Wappalizer, so you can get this extension for your browser, or you can just go to wappalizer.com or whatever and provide the domain name and that'll tell us what sort of technologies are operating on the web server. So we can see here node.js, we can see express as well. So PHP is probably not going to be an extension worth checking for here. Let's just do a standard directory busting and see what folders we have. And let's also go and start answering some of these questions. So I don't want to fall too far behind on these. We were asked what ports are open. We got SSH on 22 and then port 80 as well, our HTTP service. What software is running? Okay, so we saw that as well. Let's go back and double check. It's Node.js. What is the name of the web framework? Well, that was Express. And what's the name of the vulnerability? All right, so let's go and have a look at this actual web page. We might check the source code first of all, see is there anything of interest, any of these JavaScript files. Doesn't look like it, although there is a zip file mentioned here so we might want to go and see can we access that no is there an uploads folder also no so let's go back let's have a look at this form we could try and put some different input in here we could see what happens when we enter a script and we don't get an alert showing up there but it is reflected to the screen what was mentioned in the task 4 is asking what happens if we submit 7 times 7 in these curly braces let's try that and we get this error we can see that we ran into a parsing error with the input we provided it was expecting one of these data types and instead it got invalid so we can have a look and see Based on the error message, a little bit of information, we can see that handlebars is being used as a node module, which is a template in engine. And there might be some more information here of use. We can see, for example, the directory structure here. But what we want to do is go and have a look and see what this 
command was about. So I'm just wondering if I actually just put that into a search engine. Okay, no, that's not what we were looking for. Uh, all right, let's go to Hacktricks. The vulnerability type is SSTI, Server Side Template Injection. So if we have a look at Hacktricks, let's see a bit about that. So a server side template injection occurs when an attacker is able to use native template syntax to inject a malicious payload into a template which is then executed server side. Template engines are designed to generate web pages by combining fixed templates with volatile data. Server side template injections occur when the user inputs concatenated directly into a template rather than passed in as data. This allows attackers to inject arbitrary template directives in order to manipulate the template engine often enable them to take control of the server. So we've got an example of some vulnerable code here where it's taking, it's rendering the template and it's take, it's concatenating the user supplied input to this string. So as we can see in the previous part of the template, it's been dynamically generated using the get parameter. As template syntax is evaluated server side, this potentially allows an attacker to place a server side template injection payload into the name parameter. So they can basically as we saw with what we entered here, what we were hoping to see was the result of 7 times 7. If we got 49, or if we got back 777777, it means that something's being executed here. It's not just returning the string, it's actually executing the, uh, well, it's doing the equation. Or uh, Different templating engines will react differently, that's why I said there. It might come back 49, or it might come back with seven sevens actually I think it would need to be it would need to have quotes around one of them to do that but uh, that's fine let's let's go and have a look at some of the example payloads here what we want to do is have a look down the side on the right we can see some different templating engines we know that we're using handlebars because we saw that in the error message and we've got some example payloads that we should be able to go and try here so we've got one for path traversal we could try this as well, but that, it looks like it's just going to return the same value. Um, so it's probably this we're going to want to try, which is actually trying to get code execution. And you can see there's a URL encoded version here. Let me just go back to the hack the box questions. I don't want to fall too far behind on these. So it asked us what was the vulnerability we test for, and that is server side template injection. It asked us what was the templating engine being used within Node.js, that was handlebars. What is the name of the burp suite tab used to encode text? All right, let's take a look at burp suite. So I actually would typically use the hacked verter to encode and decode things, but it's not that's not what it's looking for. It's looking for the decoder, where we can decode and we can encode here. So as an example, we could take this, paste it in here. Oh, no, we can't. OK. That's unfortunate. Let me take the whole thing. We'll take the whole thing, we'll get rid of the bottom line. And now we have some options to encode or decode. So we can encode that as URL. And now we've got a URL encoded version. Let's also, let me take that to the hack verter as well. We can take that there, we could do something similar. So we'll select it and then we'll do encode. And we have base64, base64 URL, HTML. URL encode, and we've got a couple of different options. We can URL encode everything or just certain characters which are normally problematic. I'll do encode all and we get back a similar result here. You could also go to Cyberchef or to URL encoder.com or something. So for example, we'll put this in here. We'll say URL encode, and there we get the result. So just to show there's a few different tools we can use to do that, depending on what your personal preference is. Well now let's go back and insert the correct answer here was decoder. In order to send special characters, what kind of encoding do we need? And that was URL encoding. Also to mention, let me just also show, so let's make a request again. Let's just do a normal request. We'll do the same request. And we'll have a look at that in Burp Suite. Now if you want to get rid of all this additional stuff in here in Burp Suite, we have Hack the Box and Firestore Google APIs and GCHQ and stuff like that. If you want to get rid of that, you can add this to the scope. So let's say bike.hackthebox. If I right click that, we can add it to the scope. And then we can go into our options and say, first of all, we'll say we only want to accept client requests if they're in, in scope, if the URL is in scope. And then similarly, you can go into the HTTP history tab and just filter and say you only want to show in scope items. 
If I do that and click apply, the only things we're going to see now is going to be bike, which is good. It means you can go and browse around other sites and you're not going to get a lot of noise in there. So we'll take this post request, we'll send it to the repeater, and you can see the email address is currently URL encoded. So if you do control, oh, let me highlight the whole thing. If you do control shift and U, that'll URL decode it. If you do control and U, it will re re URL encode it. However, it doesn't encode all characters. Notice that it's a bit different. You can also select here URL encode as you type. So typically if you try to URL encode something, like if I add a space in here, and now do that again, control and U, you'll see it's added a plus instead of a space because there are certain characters which will ultimately be rejected with HTTP requests which and others that typically won't. So you can URL encode everything as we did with the Hackverter and the Decoder tab but you don't necessarily need to do that with all the characters. Okay let's see what the next question was then. Not too many to go. Let's see what when we use the payload from Hattricks to run system commands we get an error back what is not defined. Okay so we already converted that to URL. Let me take a copy of that. Let's go back to our repeater and we can just paste that in here as the email, send that off and we get back this error. If you want to view this in a browser you can right click and request in browser or show response in browser. Take a copy of the URL and access it here. It just depends if, if you prefer viewing things in the browser or not. We can see here that require is not defined so if we have a look at our payload again we had this return require child process dot exec who am I require is not defined so that's not available for us let's go and fill that in what variable is the name of the top level scope in node.js so the top level scope for node.js is global and that's not unique to node.js you have a global scope in programming in general a function scope and stuff like that we need to basically get command execution here, but we're not really given too much direction as to how to do that. So let's go and have a look at the documentation for, let's have a look for Node.js Globals. So we have our require here, let's take a look at that. So it says the variable may appear global, but it is not, see require. So essentially the issue is here, we've not been provided the ability to access require so if there's some kind of sandboxing in place or there's some restrictions as to what we can access we need to basically have a look and see are there any other global objects available to node.js that we might be able to access and note that here we have our global objects it says these objects are available in all modules the following variables may appear to be global but they are not they exist only in the scope of modules see module system documentation and require is one of them so we basically need to go and start having a look through these other global objects that are available to us and see which ones of these we can use. Now I think this is a bit of a difficult step for a lot of people who will be doing starting point because obviously we've got a lot of globals here. If you've got no idea which ones to investigate and you start just having a look at all of them you're going to spend a lot of time reading documentation and code examples and not necessarily end up finding the correct solution. Um, so process is the global that we were looking for here. So if we have a look at this section here it says the process object provides information about and control over the current Node.js process. While it is available as a global it's recommended to explicitly access it via require or import. So the idea here is if we are able to access the process object we might be able to use that to load a module and therefore use call require. So let's go and modify our payload slightly. What I'm going to do is I'm going to URL decode this, control shift and U. I'm going to modify this slightly so instead of returning require we're going to return process. And we just want to see does it come back with an error. In this case it didn't and it actually came back with these objects. So what we need to do here is go back to our documentation for process and then see what can we call within process to further our objective. The problem is there's a lot in here as you can see if we go through all this stuff we're going to be if you don't know what you're looking for, you're really going to struggle to find it. But essentially what we are looking for here is the main module, process.main module, which we can see is deprecated, but it doesn't mean it's inaccessible. So the main module property provides an alternative way of retrieving require.main. The difference is if the main module changes at runtime, require.main may still refer to the original main module 
in modules that were acquired before the change occurred. So let's go back to our hack tricks page and let's have a look in here to see if there's any main module payloads. And there is, we can see a few different ones. They're for different templating engines, not for handlebars. But we could go through and get an idea of how these work. So we know that we can call process. We could try and call process main module. Let's actually just go and change that to dot main module. We send that off and we can see that this is returned again. Add the require as well. In fact, let's add all of this. Let's change that to who am I? I might be missing some URL in code in here. Let's have a look. Okay, and we got back the result as root. So we have command execution. We can change that to something else, say ls. And now we've listed the files in the directory. We can have a look to see where our root flag is. Probably going to need to URL encode that. No, that was okay. All right, so we've got a flag there as well. We can do flag.txt. And we've got back our flag. Let's go and check what the questions were. So we were asked who are we, we are root. And then we're asked to submit the root flag. So although we were unable to call require directly, we were able to access the process object and from there call main module and then access require which we could then use to spawn a child process and cat root flag.txt. I think that's a little bit of a tougher machine than the other tier one machines, if I remember them correctly. But there are less steps than I've seen in the tier two machines anyway. Uh, but I hope you've enjoyed this video. If you have any questions or comments, leave them down below. Thanks.